to introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, Jan Sikonix from uh, Widzem uh, Planning uh, Region. Uh, from Widzem Planning Region, and I'm very glad to see that you have joined our panel on presumerism. Uh, together, together with my colleague Agris Commanders, uh, we will briefly introduce you the topic for building development uh, developed uh, toolbox uh, and uh, specifically a uh, presumer tool uh, with uh, different uh, annexes and different calculation tools. I will introduce you uh, briefly with all what we have done uh, during the project, uh, but uh, my colleague Agris will explain uh, more in detail about the, the tool and afterwards we will have short video about usage of the tool and then a uh, short discussion uh, altogether we have 45 minutes so uh, we don't have as much time as we would like to therefore we will try to be brief and uh, if you have any questions please do not hesitate and write them during the presentation or please raise your hand and we'll be able to give you permission to use your microphone um i don't hear anything anybody else uh, does somebody have the same uh, problem as petra there's uh petra right that uh, there's another session voice in the presumer session so for me everything is okay maybe yes maybe you should uh, close the, the main session and uh, okay so i will i will continue uh okay so yeah please don't hesitate to ask the questions uh, uh as uh, as you heard in the previous uh, presentation uh, shown by marit uh, during the effect for buildings uh, project different tools supporting energy efficiency were developed resumer is just one of the tools uh, in the project toolbox and uh, first of all, understand. We would like to understand uh, what is a presumer when we are talking about this. Then presumer is energy consumer that produces energy to support self-consumption, and the surplus energy is given to the other users. In this case, in this project, we were concentrating on PV solar panels producing electricity. The main aim is to use most of the electricity on spot for self-consumption and the surplus energy is injected into the grid. Of course, if you have the possibility to give it to your neighbor or to give it to the energy community next to you, this is uh, welcome. But uh, during this project, we found out that actually the legislation and the barriers and also the technical possibility to, to connect to the neighbor uh, or to give your electricity to the neighboring house, it's very, uh, complicated uh, for at this moment uh, therefore uh, at the end of the project we developed uh, uh, different uh, policy recommendations where we want and are trying to to move forward uh, to to make this possible so uh, the presumer tool consists of guide for presumerism and its annexes uh, during the project, the whole process from evaluation of the barriers and legislation to guidelines for PV panel procurement, which was used in the real project finance from other sources, was developed. All of the project knowledge and experience has been summarized in the project tools. Uh, the tool guide describes briefly the concept uh, it, uh, and uh, itself uh, what can be found in the, in the annexes. Therefore, the guide for presumerism, it's, it's quite short. It uh, gives the most of the information, what can be found in the annexes. And uh, the guide uh, of the presumer can be given to the decision makers. And uh, it's possible to read it very fast. And if you are interested in the tools uh, found in the annexes, then you can find the specific annex and uh, read further. So the tool... Uh, uh, consists of uh, uh, annexes for solar energy planning or, strat or strategic planning for step-by-step -step how to become presumerism, guideline for procurement of solar energy panels, effect for buildings calculation tool, uh, presumer training materials. Uh, you have already presentations uh, 
what you can use and train your uh, colleagues or different trainees and, and etc. And then we have some uh, cases or good practices from the project. Uh, I will describe two of them a little bit more specific. Uh, and also video presentations. We will see, see a short uh, video today in this panel, but uh, longer videos are also available in the tool and uh, they were developed during the project. Uh, so uh, I will now try to describe very briefly what can be found in, uh, in each of the annexes. So uh, the guideline for solar energy strategic planning uh, gives you insight in European and each participating country legislation framework regarding presumerism. So we found out that it's uh, very different and uh, well, this is one of also the policy recommendations what needs to be done that we can synchronize these uh policy uh, and legislation framework but together with the project partners we analyzed also the support schemes tools available in each country and also guidelines which are already there and uh, trying to find out what can be improved there and what is needed uh, in addition and uh, and the conclusions were used uh, developing the new uh, tools and uh, annexes for for this guide in this section we looked on the uh, pv panels uh, so uh, also so the next uh, sorry sorry uh, the slides skipped probably so yeah then the next slide is a guideline for step by step how to become a presumerist so uh, in this section uh, we looked on how to really become the so how to install the solar panels in your uh, household. We used uh, all the steps starting from planning, which was in the previous uh, guide, and uh, then uh, how, to, uh, how to calculate what kind of uh, capacity is needed, how to uh, communicate with the uh, distribution network operator, how to test uh, did you uh, purchased uh, the necessary power and uh, how to purchase your solar panels, what kind of uh, technologies is better to use and so on. So basically this uh, guide uh, provides all the information, practically what you need to read before you are becoming presumerism and it helps you to avoid some barriers or to give you more understanding on the process. So. Uh, so the next uh, some guideline for procurement of solar energy helps you to include right technical specifications and other requirements in the procurement, which is a very useful tool if you have not been, uh, if you do not have any experience in this field. Uh, we found out this very useful also in one of our cases where about 50 kilowatt power uh, capacity was installed in Gulben, a municipality. And uh, without these, uh, rec uh, without this uh, guide, the municipality uh, was trying to purchase uh, the solar panels uh, for about three times, and it was not successful because there was a different uh, comments from the installers and designers. And then the fourth time using these guidelines, they were successful and they installed uh, a little bit more than 50 kilowatts of uh, uh, PV panel uh, capacity. And uh, so the next, uh, probably the most uh, practically useful tool is the calculation tool, which allows not only to evaluate the produced electricity amount, which uh, such kind of tools are very, uh, widely available uh, in the internet, uh, but uh, this tool specifically also evaluates how much the produced electricity can be used and consumed in your building, taking into account historically hourly electricity consumption. So it's very useful. I will show you also into the next slide that uh, this is the most crucial part what needs to be evaluated. So. So yeah, and uh, during the project, different cases were developed, all the partners, not all, but most of the partners were working on the tool presumerism. 
So every partner in their own country uh, evaluate, evaluated legal barriers and uh, were, are, uh, were looking on the possibilities how to give the electricity to the neighbor or to the, the grid. There were uh, mapping cases where uh, different and interesting methodologies were developed uh, how to map uh, available solar areas on the ground, for example. Uh, then different tools were uh, uh, developed, uh, but in the end we, we uh, used this only one tool, which is a common tool for the project. We approved the tool, we developed uh, the procurement, uh, this guide how to purchase the best uh, solar panels for your use. And also in the end we worked with uh, cases where we also after the project is already installed how we measure and verify if our solar panels uh, correspond to our technical specification what we wanted to purchase so and in the end we had a series of different trainings and and workshops so one of the cases about this mapping is uh, was uh, developed uh, by our finnish project partners in the Laparanta city where they uh, tried to find out uh, what what are the best ground areas for solar panels and uh, this is very interesting and it can be found in the project uh, uh, project homepage uh, the methodology how to how to do this because the Laparanta city it's very green city and then they want to install even more solar panels and uh, be more environmentally friendly therefore developed uh, 21 criteria how to look on the city how to find the best uh, places where to install solar panels so this uh, definitely is recommended to see if it's very if it's uh, uh, useful for you and then the second case which i also wanted to describe a little bit more is uh, how we approbated the calculation tool altogether we uh, approbated it on uh, 11 uh, latvian uh, with the planning region buildings, uh, what we found out is that uh, uh, in, for uh, like average uh, Latvian public building, uh, the actually the optimal solar capacity, solar panel capacity, is uh, is between ten or twenty uh, kilowatts. Um, it's it's the best. Uh, pay this uh, capacity is with the best uh, payback time. And uh, if we would like to install a bigger uh, capacity for solar panels, then the payback time would decrease. Uh, this is at the, at the existing support schemes. And uh, however, of course, the accumulated uh, savings are higher if you install the bigger solar capacities. Uh, we took into account also uh, internal rate of return and the net present value but uh, when we are looking uh, and communicating with decision makers, uh, still sometimes simple payback time is better. And we found out that the average uh, payback times actually are quite uh, good. And uh, there were specific buildings uh, with uh, high base load, uh, which uh, payback time was even eight to 10 years. Uh, therefore, it's a very good uh, project to invest in. And as I uh, mentioned before, uh, the biggest advantage of the calculation tool is that you can uh, you can see uh, and uh, you can uh, see not only your produ produced electricity amount, but also your historical consumption and evaluate does your uh, produced electricity amount correspond with the consumption. And for example, in this case, with uh, orange, with uh, this uh, uh, yellow line, you can see the solar production and with the red, the historical consumption for this specific building. And even if the total electricity, electricity consumption is very high, there are some days when uh, sun produces much more electricity, therefore surplus electricity amount uh, is, is there and they need to think how to uh, sell it or how to give it to, to the neighbors. So that was very briefly uh, about uh, presumer section in uh, Epic for Buildings project. If you have any specific questions, uh, please write them in the chat or raise your hand or uh, you can write me in my, for, in, for my email. 
And uh, now I will give uh, the floor to my colleague Agar's commanders who will describe a little bit more about the tools. So yeah, we, we have one question. I will try to answer it very fast. Uh, Petra is writing, is there a difference of presumer in comparison to have PV on your own roof and get money for also feeding it into the grid, uh, the scale of it? Uh, so basically, it, it is the same principle, but uh, we look at uh, also wide, wider. In this case, it is the solar panels with uh, for for production and uh, and uh, implement injected into the grid. But it can be also more different scenarios, not only with solar panels, but for example, with solar collectors, we produce heat, and also ad other uh, other heat sources. Uh, the main difference is that uh, in this project we tried to look uh, also for with uh, with other uh, methodologies how to implement it into your households so is presumer the same principle but on the large scale and targeting public municipality buildings and having pv in the large somewhere on the roof or in the landscape so in this project the main uh, uh, audience was the public buildings and uh, uh, and the main uh, like uh, persons involved into the project, the main stakeholders are mostly from the public sector, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the methodology and the whole documents can be used uh, starting from small scale to the to the very big large scale from from private houses and to the the companies. Uh, the, the the differences with the support schemes or with the legal barriers if they changes uh, then you need to look on that so i give it the floor to other commanders who will describe a little bit more how to become a presumer yeah thanks okay thank you ian uh, can you see my presentation uh yes uh, it's uh, seeable okay thank you so thank you Janis, very very much for this introduction wait i lost the presentation and wait just a second yeah should be back now uh so i will try to uh, dig deeper a little bit and to explain what can you find in our uh, tools uh, and uh, actually what kind of information is there and so i hope that it's useful as well for your projects and i will explain as well a little bit more on the calculation tool which we develop together with the partners and mainly we were they we were uh, we were developing our tool based on the uh, one example from the uh, Swedish partners. However, the tool was adapted to the local conditions. And as as you were, uh, as Janis was already explaining, it was also tested uh, in different uh, case studies. Um, so um, basically, we were uh, how to became a prosumerism and what can you find in the tool it's based on the first of all on existing uh, literature review on existing guidelines uh, available already so uh, as well you can find in our in our tool the some useful references uh, if you are interested more about the or other calculation tools or other technical guidelines which is available then we try to summarize this information already available and uh, we were looking on the real examples and then based on this information on the best case examples from the partners and based on existing tools and guidelines from other projects and other countries we summarized uh, in our mind most useful uh, information and uh, provided in, in one condensed uh, a guideline for the for the municipalities for the as well as well for the private clients so uh, if we look on the existing um, existing tools and guidelines uh, so uh, be before to before to uh, to start with the little bit with our calculation tool and how it's different and how it can be used we were looking as well on um, 
on the tools uh, out there and uh, what's the benefits, what's the maybe drawbacks. So basically, you can see that um, you can you can divide tools in three different parts. Uh, from one side, there is um, different uh, solar maps and atlases available, which we actually recommend to use as well because it's uh, quite easy to use. You can you should know just uh, the address or or you should know the coordinates of your building, and or very easily you call you can already estimate at least the theoretical amount of solar energy available. However, of course, it's the question how much energy you can actually harvest because this is just theoretical energy, uh, energy available, uh, but it already gives you good um, some starting point that you can, uh, you can actually see, okay, what's, what is the potential? And then you need other tools actually to, to to try to really understand how much energy from this theoretical potential you can actually use and you can feed in, in the grid or, or how much energy consumption um, you can use for your own needs. And, and um, uh, where our tool is placed, our tool is placed in the second part that you know the theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, uh, energy uh, energy amount available and then you will try you you would like to know actually how much energy you can harvest and how much energy you can use for your own needs and how much energy you you should or or, or you will be putting back in the in the into the grid so our tool is is more already technical that it allows uh, to calculate actually the real benefits and uh, as well afterwards in the very end you can um, you can add the cost on top of these results and you can uh, you can really estimate the as well the financial benefits uh, of the of the those results so uh, um, in the guidelines you can you can uh, you can see as well the list of different tools if if you if you would like to have more uh, more information and, and and try to just explore what what's out there as well we have some usable references from existing guidelines uh, guidelines and best practice examples from from different projects which could be used as well in in your projects and um, as well, we have uh, ranked the, the tools, uh, so you can you can see which specific tool could be useful maybe for for your your specific uh, case. Uh, so if we go to the uh, tool which was um, developed during the Epic for Buildings project, then um, what uh, I was explaining that actually tool allows you. If you know, if you know already the uh, theoretical energy consumption, uh, not consumption, but uh, energy available from the solar radiation, then with this tool you can actually try to optimize the system. Uh, you can try to estimate what would be the best um, uh, size to install on your specific uh, building. It's as well. Uh, uh, it's as well allows you to match the electricity consumption, your electricity consumption profile with the uh, solar um, uh, production profile, and as well in the end, it allows you to make the financial calculation and, and identify the savings, incomes, and overall profitability of the of the system as well um, it, it, there is different options i will explain a little bit later that you can uh, you can see on the system standalone system if uh, for example you're planning to use your pv panels only for the self-consumption without feeding in the grid you can you you can uh, use the system which is connected to the grid uh, with uh, batteries or without batteries so with storage system or without the uh, storage uh, storage system so uh, if if uh, yeah you can uh, if you start with just the question okay how much solar is out there 
uh, you can see if there is just a very uh, small example from from uh, North Europe and uh, you can start with the solar atlases which is out there as, as you were uh, so that we have recommended some slides where you can actually uh, some uh, some sources you can uh, actually use to find out uh, what is solar radiation available if we look for example um, you know, for Riga or for for Latvia then uh, then you can see that uh, there is approximately 1000 kilowatt hours per square meter solar radiation available of course it will change in, from year to year but on average for the calculation you can use some average uh, numbers obviously there is much more sun available during the during the summer uh, or maybe what's interesting for for uh, latvia that uh, there is even much more sun and uh, maybe available in may and june not as much for example in august uh, as uh, sometimes it's um, it's um, estimated in, in other tools if you if you're not really pay too much attention however you see that the solar radiation or solar energy available really it's um, it's really different in different months of the year so as well it's very important to have not only average numbers per year not even average numbers per one month but there is really important to have the calculation based on hourly rate because then you can match the hourly energy consumption and hourly solar production uh, so uh, this is uh, this is maybe one of the uh, advantages of the this tool which uh, allows to actually to to do it um in 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 the in the guide as well we describe a little bit the technology solar technologies as such uh, we focus in uh, in in our project we focus more on, more on pv panels uh, however, of course, there is as well option to use solar energy for um, for heat generation, for for heating, or for hot water preparation, and and we have as well some useful references if you are really interested in the solar thermal as well. We have some some uh, uh, some some suggestions for you however the tool as such uh, is uh, dedicated for the electricity production as we see uh, this um, uh, is, is uh, could be widely widely used um, so in um, in in the guide you can you can if you're interested there will be a little bit more in, as well more technical information about the technologies about uh, efficiencies uh, so i just advise you to uh, look in our uh, in uh, our materials and you will find much more information so there is some examples uh, for for the um, for solar thermal uh, and and some uh, more technical details on uh, pv panels as such how the pv panels actually are working how the electricity is produced what is the different uh, panel uh, pv panel technologies the average uh, efficiencies where you can expect a little bit more uh, uh, more efficient uh, uh, panels which could be a little bit less the advantages disadvantages so and this is described as well in the tool and uh, of course you can you can you can look and you can already start to think what kind of uh, technology would be useful for for your building uh, for for your uh, for your specific uh, project uh, so of course afterwards you can uh, you can already uh, then to contact the te technology providers and, and try to understand the very specific uh, and exact uh, numbers but uh, we try to with this guide as well we try to provide the average and uh, the average uh, reference numbers that you approximately can can start to plan uh, plan your project uh, as well in the guide you can find the information and the most important factors which actually determines the efficiency of the system and which will determine the 
uh, amount of energy you can uh, produce with the solar PV panels. Uh, one important, beside of course the technology as such, which you will be choosing uh, depending from your where, where it's possible to install the PV panels, if it's roof or it's maybe the wall or or, or, or another place. It's uh, shading, very important. Of course, we describe the main parameters, how, how the shading could affect the amount of energy. Uh, then the, uh, the temperature and, and external environment in which the technologies are used and actually that you should pay attention when you, were, when you are deciding on the specific uh, technology or, or uh, on specific um, technology provider, then you should pay attention to these uh, technical parameters because they really affect the efficiency of the solar collectors. Uh, then we explain a little bit on the general uh, different setups of the PV systems. Uh, as I was explaining, you can look on the standalone system that uh, it's usually very small systems only for your own use or a grid connected systems which is mostly used in uh, bigger buildings uh, for public buildings and then of course grid connected system with batteries or without uh, batteries which is as well possible to to calculate using the tool which i will be showing you uh, just in the minute um, um, so uh, as well the important factor of course how the how the actually the, the solar panels are uh, placed and what is the angle uh, towards the sun and you can try to look what is the optimum optimum size and optimum uh, optimum uh, optimum the direction of the solar panel system of course it depends as well from the from the building from the neighboring buildings and then shading and actually where it's real really technical possible to place the uh, solar panels uh, but then you can a uh, little bit uh, try to understand what, what could be the uh, what could be the optimal uh, optimal uh, uh, optimal uh, dimensions and uh, in the title and azimuth uh, uh, for the for the system um, so as well in the guide um, we described the uh, general uh, general steps to to actually install the system uh, it should be mentioned that of course it really depends a little bit from country to country um, uh, as during our uh, during our meetings as well when we were uh, discussing the different uh, case studies from from different uh, countries we realized that uh, the the uh, the legal requirements are different however of course the main steps remain very similar there is planning phase there is uh, uh, where there is a planning and design phase and installation then it's the phase where you actually dealing with the authorities and the grid operators trying to understand what is their requirements and then the installation connection to the grid on, and operation so uh, this uh, this all phases and main steps are described where possible we as well try to provide some uh, advice and then uh, hints uh, what is most important uh, factors from uh, our point of view which should be taken into account in each of these steps and as Janis was explaining um, this uh, uh, then could be used in a procurement and we have the, one of the annexes which is uh, dedicated to the PV panel procurement and actually there we try to summarize the main the main uh, requirements which should be included in the in the procurements based on these main steps of the project uh, project implementation so if you if we go to the tool itself um, then uh, which is available and and you can use the tool and then I, 
and I really advise you to use it because I, I'm, I think it's really good tool uh, available for free, uh, which uh, as well is an important factor because most of the tools actually cost quite a lot of money and uh, so this is a very good tool uh, available for free and, uh, and uh, very, I would say, in, in very good detail uh, for the, uh, for, for the uh, project, uh, for evaluation of the potential project. Uh, so, and basically, the, I will just go through uh, the, the, the tool, the main, main steps and uh, input uh, values which you need and, and the outputs, which, what can you expect from the tool. Uh, then if, you, if we start with the input data, uh, then, um, then uh, the first of all, you, you, you start with the energy consumption. You should understand your energy consumption. Uh, this could be done in two ways, whether you have actually just a, uh, yearly, if you just know the yearly energy consumption and then you can use already uh, preset uh, load profiles available in the tool, there will be of course not exact load profiles which you have for your building, but at least it will allow you to, uh, to, to somehow to uh, to estimate more precisely what could be the uh, and what could be your consumption uh, in different uh, in different months and different weeks? Of course, if you have the uh, if if you have the if you have very precise um, hourly uh, hourly meter data, then you can use of course them. And based on, on the, your uh, energy consumption, your load prof profile, then you start to estimate um, the, what could be the load which you can install actually on the roof and what is the energy, uh, energy produced uh, with, with your system. Um, so, um, uh, if you... You, you 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 can start to estimate your install uh, capacity which which could be done as well uh, with help with the solar atlas uh, as i was explaining in the very beginning and then if you it's it's more just um, uh, it's you you can try different options and i really suggest you try different options you can use a small step uh, i don't know 5 kilowatts maybe or less depending of course how big is your system just to to try it out and then you can in the results section uh, you can see the uh, solar energy pro produced it's uh, your own consumption and then then you can estimate actually how much uh, uh, produce solar energy produce you can use for your own consumption how much energy is feed back in the grid and uh, what is the uh, what is the energy uh, part which you can cover from the pv panels so in this case it's real example from bulban as well in this case you can see that with the 54 kilowatt uh, kilowatts installed uh, it's um, they almost covered 33 percent of their uh, electricity consumption and then we as well uh, with the tool you can play a little bit with the installed um, uh, install the amount of solar uh, panels and as well you can try to understand whether it's uh, uh, feasible to install the storage system batteries of course it's additional cost but then of course it allows you to a little bit to uh, use more energy for for uh, self-consumption um so uh, uh it's it's the on the energy part on in on financial calculation part uh, if you know the price per uh, price per kilowatt hour of course and this is you can just uh, should look in on your bills uh, how much energy how uh, how much energy costs for you uh, if you know the old taxes and then uh, fees for the uh, for the grid operator and then then uh, 
you estimate uh, how much actually uh, what is the energy savings and uh, you can translate these savings in uh, in uh, cost savings and uh, in uh, and uh, the and income if you and based on area of uh, pv panels or install capacity you can estimate the cost of course this cost then will really will depend from the specific building for from for, speci for from specific technology and how the system is installed but however we as well uh, we provide some references if if you don't know this uh, Cost, uh, we provide some references uh, to estimate the investments. And so if you know savings, if you know investments, you can calculate the payback period for, for your system. Yes, Yanis, I have time still. Uh, just maybe uh, start to finish uh, that we can have some yes. few uh, questions. And yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm almost in the end. Uh, just a uh, few slides. This Orianis was explaining already, so this is as well very important Then you can actually match your uh, energy consumption uh, with the energy production, but not on the yearly or even not on the uh, period of one month, but on hourly, uh, on based on the hourly consumption and hourly energy production, which is um, just uh, very important. And uh, I will just uh, will show you an uh, example with the different um, options. So with the tool, actually, you can then try out different possible options, trying to find the, what is the optimum system. For example, for the Goldman municipality, we, we, we can see, okay, what is the, uh, there is capacity 54 uh, kilowatts installed. But um, uh, whether we are in installing the, uh, whether we are installing maybe bigger system or we decreasing the capacity, or we are we are changing the we are we are changing the we are installing as well the batteries in the our system, uh, which is additional cost. But as well, then it's, for example, if the batteries are installed, the same capacity, batteries are installed, okay, it's additional cost, but it allows us to use a little bit more energy for our own consumption. But how the payback period is changing, whether actually it's improving or, uh, uh, or actually it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not really changing because the benefits are savings are not as big as the, and the cost. So different options uh, as well with the possibility to add, uh, if, for example, if you have some financial aid or grant available and depending from savings investments, you can calculate the, the payback period. For example, this was more real a scenario when uh, the municipality had as well the grant component and in, the, in this case the payback periods was very short around six years uh, so uh, yes this is uh, shortly uh, from my side uh, uh, on the on the calculation tool maybe if there is some questions um, yeah, or after the or after the video i don't know uh, super, Agris. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, we will. Uh, we are out of the time, but uh, I will put in the chat uh, the video uh, link to the video where uh, it's like more detailedly explained about the calculation tool, and uh, then uh, you can see it uh, when you have time. And uh, also uh, after this uh, panel discussion, we have a lunch break uh, till uh, twelve o'clock. Uh, Central European time, uh, we will leave the video uh, here. Uh, and uh, if you don't have uh, anything planned, uh, you can still watch it. And uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Agris, about your uh, your presentation. Uh, maybe somebody uh, has some uh, some questions. Uh, so if uh, there's no questions or if nobody is uh, is uh, writing or still writing uh, August, I have one question for you yes uh, how do you see uh, what is needed or what 
uh, what is needed uh, that uh, municipalities or households will have uh, much much more installed capacity in in Latvia and also in other countries uh, why it's not happening uh, yet uh, if we see the technologies are there the payback times are quite uh, good already and uh, the, the legislation is getting better there are some support schemes uh, but what's what mm -hmm. is missing there mm. A good question. Uh, of course, uh, it's it's hard to answer for uh, different countries. I could say more for for Latvia how I see it. Uh, I see that uh, there uh, is still um, a lack of uh, experience, actually, and knowledge. I would say you're right that the technologies are there and the payback periods, if we uh, are analyzing, especially for smaller systems, are very reasonable. Uh, uh, and uh, but there is still lack of knowledge and actually with this um, project actually it's one of the aims and one of the uh, one of the yeah activities to, to somehow to try to increase the knowledge and capacity in the municipalities and for example this tool which i tried to shortly explain i hope that this tool which is freely available but from other side it's very detailed because uh, sometimes problem with the free tools available that they're yeah they're too optimistic or uh, there's not enough details but with this tool actually the energy manager or engineer or project manager from the municipality can really try to estimate uh, uh, the, the what is the real or or at least estimate estimated payback periods in in a step-by-step -step way and i think somehow this link is a little bit missing uh, in, in latvia that for one side there is technology providers which have this knowledge they have different as well calculation tools but it's for professionals and actually the energy manager or project manager from municipality which is not very deep in, in just in the solar technologies uh, it's hard to use them from other side is if, if you have if, if you don't have any understanding about the potential and about the potential feasibility of the system then as well it's even uh, not sense to ask uh, the quotation or or even the, uh, to even start to think about this project uh, and uh, and i hope that actually if this tool is disseminated and actually it's we and it's more uh, more used than uh, with the playing with this tool even with the uh, estimates which we provide in the tool on the cost and, and so on which afterwards could be then uh, detailed uh, with, with, when, when you really understand uh, what what you would like to to see or what is the potential uh, I hope then in this case there will be more and more uh, activity uh, at the moment I see that somehow it's there's just not enough knowledge that uh, uh, people uh, in, in general people know yes there is solar PV uh, technology as such it's, it's, it's nothing new from one side everybody knows this but nobody really knows what uh, how big system could be used for their specific building and even approximately how much uh, in uh, uh, how feasible the system is this is the problem Okay, uh, thank you, Agus, for your uh, comments. Uh, I don't see any other uh, questions, and uh, actually our time is uh, is limited. Uh, I will say uh, once more uh, thank you for uh, visiting our uh, panel or about our uh, presumer uh, tools and, uh, and the materials, what we have developed during the project. Um, I uh, want to remind you that uh, now there is a lunch break till 12 o'clock and uh, then uh, please visit the the big uh, room the big conference room and at this panel a discussion room and uh, and then uh, so i will leave now uh, you with uh, the video presentation so if you have time you can still watch watch this but uh, officially the, the the panel session is over so uh, thank you
thank you also others and uh, let's, let's keep working okay thanks Projekta efekta par bildumas ieturos ir izstrādāts aprēķina Rīgas, kus jums, kas jums palīdz iziet cauri būtībā trīs būt, būtiskākajām projekta ieviešanas fāzēm. Ja? Tas ir plānošana, sagatavošanās, tad ir saskaņošana dokumentācijas un iekārtu uzstādīšana. Ja mēs skatāmies uz plānošanas procesu, Tad um, pavisam noteikti tā, kā var nākt šis te aprēķina instruments, kus, kas jums palīdz saprast, kāda ir tā optimālā sistēma. Ka, kas ir, cik daudz saules kolektors mēs pirmkārt varam uzlikt uz jums, tā kāds ir tas optimālais saules kolektoru lielums, kāda ir tā optimālā saules kolektoru vai saules paneļu, paneļu virsma. Ar gulbenes pašvaldības ēkas piemēru, Mēs parādīsim, kā šis instruments darbojās, un jums būs iespēja sekot līdz un paskatīties uz praktiska piemēra palīdzību, kādā veidā tad ir iespējams veikt šādu veidu aprēķinu. Un es ceru, ka šo te instrumentu jūs arī varat izmantot savu ēku gadījumā un nedaudz padarboties ar savām ēkām un tik tiešām apsvērt iespēju izmantot salvas paneļus vai no elektroenerģijas ražošanā vai salvas kolektoras siltumenerģijas ražošanā. Ja mēs skatāmies uz šī te gulbenes ēkas piemēru, tad ēka ir pietiekoši liela, nedaudz virs 2000 kvadrāta metriem. Pieejamā jumtu platība ir 920 kvadrāta metri. Un mēs sākam ar to, ka mēs saprotam, kādā veidā ēka ir orientēta un cik tad Mēs teorētiski vispār varam saražot elektroenerģiju, izmantojot esošo jumtu platību. Tad no vienas puses jūs saprotat, kāda ir pieejamā jumtu platība, un ar aprēķinu programmas palīdzību saprotat to, cik tad elektroenerģijas jūs varat saražot. No otras puses jums jāskatās, kāds ir tas patēriņš, un tas arī ne mazāk svarīgi. Neviens saprast to, cik ir kopējais enerģijas patēriņš, bet arī saprast to, kā, kādā veidā šis elektroenerģijas patēriņš ir sadalīts laikā – pa mēnešiem, pa nedēļām un, un pa stundām. Jo skaidrs, ka saulīte spīd mums dienā, un, un tad ir jautājums, vai dienā arī mēs patērējam pietiekoši daudz elektroenerģijas. Un varbūt naktī, tad, kad saules nav, un cik ir patēriņš atkal naktīs. Ja, tādēļ mēs turpinām ar esošā elektroenerģijas patēriņa analīzi. Pašvaldību ēku gadījumā to ir iespējams izdarīt pietiekoši veiksmīgi un precīzi, tāpēc, ka ir pie, pieejami viedie skaitītāji, tādēļ elektroenerģijas patēriņš ir pieejams x stundas griezumā, tad jums ir pieejams pilnīgi katras stundas patēriņš, kuru jūs varat ievadīt šajā aprēķina Rīkā, Un būtībā šis te aprēķina Rīgas jums palīdz salāgot jūsu elektroenerģijas patēriņu ar saržoto elektroenerģijas patēriņu stundas griezumā. Ja? Un jūs redzat tādu attiecību, cik mēs katrā stundā saržojam elektroenerģiju un cik mēs katrā stundā patērējam elektroenerģiju. Un tad atveidojās vai nu pārpalikums kaut kāds, vai nu mēs saržojam nedaudz vairāk, vai arī mums ir kaut kāds daudzums, kur, kurš ir tad būtībā nu, kaut kāds daudzums, kas būtu vēl jāpiegādā no tīkla. Tad, et, jā, šis te aprēķina Rīgas palīk salāgot saražotu elektroenerģijas daudzumu ar patērētu elektroenerģijas daudzumu. Vēl tā priekšrocība ir tāda, ka tas dot iespēju arī grafiski attēlot to, cik tad daudz enerģijas jūs saražot katrā no, no nedēļas dienām. Ja? Un tas var būt ļoti būtiski arī ceļš pašvaldību ēku gadījumā, kur tas elektroenerģijas patēriņš nav vienāds katru, katru dienu, jo skaidrs, ka darba dienās tas elektroenerģijas patēriņš lielāks, sestdienās, sveidienās nedaudz mazāks. Un tad ir ļoti svarīgi, ja būtisks jautājums, ko mēs daram ar elektroenerģijas pārpalikumu. Ja? Vai nu mēs esam izmantojami tīklā slēgtu sistēmu un nododam elektroenerģiju tīklā, vai atkal mums ir sistēma, kas ir domā tikai pašpatēriņam. Gulbenes pašvaldības ēkas gadījumā sistēma ir tā slēgta tīklā, un mēs varam elektroenerģiju nodot atpakaļ tīklai. 
Ja mēs skatāmies uz gulbenes piemēru, tad šajā gadījumā mēs redzam, ka ar saules enerģiju mēs varam nosekt līdz 30% no kopējā elektroenerģijas patēriņa. Ja jūs redzat šajos te grafikos, ka saules enerģija mums palīdz saražot būtībā 30% no kopējā elektroenerģijas patēriņa, kas ir, Jāsaka tāds, tas varētu būt viens no tādiem vidējiem, vidējiem rādītājiem, uz ko arī skatīties, ka jūs sākat modelēt, skatoties, cik daudz patēriņa mēs varam, varam ar savas enerģiju nosikt. Vēl viena priekšrocība, ko šis te aprēķina Rīgas mums ļauj darīt, ir paskatīties, kā tad tas izskatās no, no izmaksu viedokļa, ja, jo skaidrs, ka ir nepieciešamas kaut kādas investīcijas, lai iekārtas uzstādītu un ir kaut kā diegumi enerģiju saražojot. Vislielākais iegums ir tieši saražotais enerģijas daudzums, kas, ko mēs izmantojam tieši savā ēkā, tad, 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 tad tas ir ar vislielāko pievienoto vērtību. To enerģijas daudzumu, ko mēs atdodam tīklā un saņemam atpakaļ, tur tas iegums ir nedaudz mazāks, tāpēc, ka mums ir jāmaksā par pārvadi, par elektroenerģijas pārvadi. Ja līdz ar to maksimāli būtu jā, jāveido sistēma tāda, lai mēs to saražotu enerģiju izmantotu objektā uz vietas, tātad, lai, lai maksimāli nosaktu savu pašputēriņu. Tātad ieliekot aprēķina rīkā gan iespējamās investīcijas, gan arī izrēķinot to, cik mēs elektroenerģijas saražojam, cik mums ir pašpatēriņš, cik mēs atdodam tīklā, kādi ir nosacījumi ar, ar mūsu elektroenerģijas piegādātāju, par cik tad mēs elektroenerģiju iepērkam vai par cik mēs arī atdodam operatoram. Tad balsoties uz šiem te ievadu datiem, mēs spējam piedevišu precīzi noteikt, kā šis te projekts mums izskatās finansiāli. Ja, vai, protams, ja ir kaut kāda pieejama, kaut kāds papildus atbalsts, tad arī to mēs varam šajā te aprēķinos izmantot un paskatīties, ja, cik, cik, cik tad ilgā vai cik ātri šī te sistēma, sistēma atmaksājās. Gulmanas ēkas gadījumā tika saņemts arī grants priekš investīcijām, līdz ar to šis te projekts atmaksājās sešos, sešos gados, kas ir ļoti labs rādītājs. Ja, ja, ja reiķinam to, ka pati elektroenerģijas elektro ražošana šīs te sistēma, saules pāneļi, invertors, kalpo vismaz 20 līdz 25 gadus, tad sešu gadu atmaksāšanās periods ir ļoti labs rādītājs. Protams, mēs varam paskatīties arī situāciju, ja grants netiek saņemts un kā tad tas izskatās, jo, ja piemēram, netiek piesaistīts nekāds cits finansējums, tad šajā gadījumā jūs redzat, ka modelējot dažādas alternatīvas, ja, atkarībā no savas paneļu skaita un, un, un lieluma, tas tad atmaksāšanās laiks svārstās ap 9 līdz 12 gadiem kas arī ir pietiekoši labs rādītājs, ja mēs ņemam vērā to, ka pati sistēma kalpo 20 līdz 25 gadus. Jā, viens no tādiem biežākajiem arī jautājumiem, kas tiek uzdots, ir par to, vai saules enerģiju var izmantot tikai tad, ka tiešām mēs redzam to saulīti, ka, tā, ka, tā, ka saules spīd. Bet jāsaka tā, ka saules enerģija vai no elektroenerģija vai siltuma enerģija tiek ražota, pateicoties gaismai, ja, un tad, tad būtībā saules panelis izmanto redzamo gaismu un pārveido to elektroenerģiju, tā vienkāršoti izsekoties līdz ar to, arī šādā te laikā saules panelis ražos elektroenerģiju, un tā ir tā labā ziņa, un tā kā Latvijā ir cevišķi pavasaris, vasara un rudens, ir ar ļoti daudz stundām, kad ir gaišs, tad mēs varam saražot pietiekoši daudz tās elektroenerģijas un siltuma enerģijas.